Welcome to the golf locker room. Welcome to the golf locker room. How's everybody doing? You're blank, man. Doing wonderful. Doing wonderful. Where you at, Manny? Oh. You're invisible, man. Uh oh. We know that you're uh, still celebrating Halloween, man. So you don't need to scare us. <laughs> Can you, you know? hear me good? We hear you well. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, all right, all right. Well, we're just gonna uh, take me out, and uh, there you go. You can hear me, y'all. You can see me. We got you. We can see and hear Oh you. my goodness! I don't know what happened, <laughs> but I I was there all the time. All right. Let's continue because we got a fantastic show today. Got a fantastic show today. Um, first of all, what's up, Big Sif? How are you? Man, you know me, brother. I'm, I'm always great. Show our appreciation for your support. Make, 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 a, make a clap to That's right. That's right. And of course, Miss Trisha's Golf Life. <laughs> How are you? Doing well, doing well, fam. Sounds Happy to be good. here, and as I always. Am Manny, yep. Manny. All right. Um, let's get cracking. What's on their minds, which is the golf locker room's mind? Who wants to go first? Anything? Anybody go got ahead. anything? Go ahead, Trish. Uh, nothing, nothing too major. Enjoying um, a lot of sports. My Bucks lost. The oh. Braves won. I'm going yeah. to see my grandbaby first thing in the morning. So, oh, nice. Um, super, super happy. But uh, and, and it's a lot of great things going on in uh, my little world. And uh, just super, super excited about the guests that we're about to have on this show today. Nice. Nice. Dope. Nice, I'm getting nice. ready for this uh, this 100-hole marathon on Friday, man. I'm trying to figure out every way possible to get eight holes into one. Because 100 holes, man, is crazy. But the thing is, Winston-Salem State and uh, and Coach Penny, they raised a lot of money, I think, right now. Uh, they're at the precipice of uh, 25000 just in you know 10 to 15 guys raising money. And I also think Patrick Reed is going to send some uh, signature golf clubs to be auctioned off, and uh, I think he may oh, write no. a check as well. So uh, Winston-Salem State, we had them on before. Uh, it looks like they're going in the right direction. Nice, nice, nice. I love it. I love it. What's on my mind? Um, let's see. Oh, a little off topic, but uh, uh, did you watch the Kaepernick special uh, on Netflix? I liked it. You're a football guy, uh, Sif. Did you catch his uh, special done by Ava DuVernay? I didn't. And the thing is, I'm going to watch it Sunday. You know, sometimes okay. when I watch things like that, I like to have peace, no phone calls, you know, just yeah. to be able to watch it um, at my own uh, discretion. OK, well, we ain't going to talk about it then. We'll wait. Please till next don't. Week. It was done. It was done. Well, that's all okay. I'll say about that. OK, let's just get to the show then. 
You just ruined my what's on my mind, Sif. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> just messing with you. Just messing with we'll you. Talk about Miss Clark. Let's let's uh let's roll with the show. You want to do some right. introductions or tell yeah, us about so what's going on? Yeah, so we got some on. lovely ladies joining. Yeah, we got some lovely ladies joining us this evening. We have Shasta Avery Hart. We have Anita Yuida. We have Alexis Belton and Brian Jones joining us this evening. All right, let's give it up. Hi, Go. everyone. Nice, Thank nice. You. So I got everybody. One, two, three. Am I missing someone? Um, we can start, yes. you know, down. Yeah, I'm missing one. But as soon as she oh, comes, we will, uh, we will, as soon as she comes, yeah, we will we'll put her on. Man, they talk junk about me, man, in the in the uh, green room. Oh, they was they, getting you? They, they was getting, getting me, you. man. They're going to take your money. That's why you've been yeah. you've been running your mouth talking about you're going to beat everybody. They, they hey, get I, tried to, I tried to shake them up, but they weren't scared, man. <laughs> I'm good at that. I just wanted to see where they were. Uh-uh. They're going to they gonna take all your money, every bit of it, every bit of it. Okay, we do have Shasta, and we have Brianne, and we have Anita. We lost one but as soon as she comes back i will put her in the show all right welcome ladies welcome ladies um let's get it going um we'll just start across the board uh okay just is there but just her picture is not but we're going to keep it moving show will go on. we'll put our ladies up first and we'll put Brianne here we'll be on the side uh miss anita how are you i'm doing great how are you ah ah we're doing pretty good thanks so much for coming on the show we're so excited to have all of you guys here it's so nice to have you um miss clark you want to just go with um just an introduction yeah young ladies just introduce yourselves how'd you get into golf what made you get into golf uh yeah we'll start with that starting with me We'll start with you. Yeah. Let's give you some a right. round of applause and a little air horns to get you going. Um, I'm from Lagos, Nigeria, originally. Um, my family were all from Nigeria. I moved here when I was about 12 years old, 13 years old, just on my own. I went to a golf academy on Hilton Head Island, got recruited to play at University of South Carolina, graduated 2020, COVID year, and um, I just got on tour this year, Symmetra Tour. And my dad is an avid golfer. So funny, when I was young, I hated golf. I mean, I was like, how hard is it to hit a ball in a hole? Like, it's not that hard. But obviously, when you get into it, you understand the game. But yeah, my dad got my brother into playing, and I used to just go with them. And I used my brother's clubs. And then my dad saw that I loved the game, and he got me my own set of clubs. So now, I, now I'm here. My brother doesn't play golf anymore. That's uh, the irony of it. But yep, now nice. I'm here playing professional golf. Love it, love it. Yeah. Let's, let's give that up. Miss Brienne, what got you into golf? What you doing? I got into golf because of my dad. He played uh, for a long time before I started. I didn't start playing golf until I was 15. Um, and he always thought that I, I played softball growing up, so he always thought that I had a softball swing that looked a lot more like a golf swing. So he <laughs> told me to try it, and I did. And I didn't love it at first, but I – I progressed pretty fast. So I, I started to like it because I was getting good so quick. Um, and so I've been playing ever since. Nice, nice, nice. Let's give that up. And we have Miss Shasta. Let's move you to the main window. <laughs> Sorry, I was having technical difficulties. <laughs> uh, we, uh, we all are. It's this this technology, but you know, we're still looking good, so we okay. Can you hear okay, us all right? Good. Yes, it was chopped and screwed at first, so now we're good to go. Uh oh, I like chopped and screwed, just not on the podcast. Okay, we're I know. good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just give us a quick introduction. Everyone knows you, but you know, let's introduce ourselves, Miss Shasta. Yes, so my name is Shasta Averyhart. I am born and raised from Flint, Michigan. Uh, I started golf around the age of seven on behalf of my dad. Um, I kind of just fell in love with the game uh, probably around the age of nine. It took a couple of years to really like 
hone in on like understanding the game, but I knew that um, there was some talent there just by seeing the progression, um, you know, advancing, uh, especially playing junior events in the city. And uh, it was really fun. And um, I started taking it really seriously my freshman year in high school. Um, I was a two sport athlete, so I also played volleyball. And actually, I loved volleyball more than I did with golf. But in regards to a long term career option, it looked like golf was really the, uh, the sport to choose. Uh, so uh, we really honed in on golf um, all throughout high school. And I ended up quitting volleyball my after my junior season and uh, just focused solely on golf my senior year. And um, it led me to receiving a full ride scholarship to Jackson State University. Uh, I played all four years and had a pretty successful collegiate career and uh, decided to turn professional in uh, late 2009 and just went on the professional golf journey. Nice, 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 nice. Let's give that up. All right, uh, Miss Clark, you want to start off with the questions and get into it? Uh, let's see. So I know, Shasta, you said your dad got you into the game of golf. So like, and I know, did you do golf and then go into the corporate world and then come back into golf? And if so, if that was the case, I believe that's what it was. Um, you know, what made you come up with the decision to leave corporate and follow your dream? Uh, Well, I ended up gaining LPGA status pretty early in my career. And um, unfortunately, just with a lot of circumstances happening around that time, uh, it was kind of a roller coaster ride uh, for three years after uh, getting my tour card. And, you know, didn't really have enough support. Um, I shouldn't say, um, sometimes you're like, people are like, well, you know, have a lot of support. Well, yeah, like it it takes a lot of money to play golf. I think we all know this. And especially playing on the LPGA tour, you definitely have a bigger budget. Um, At the time, there wasn't a whole lot of support. You know, there were people behind me, but you just need, you know, bigger dollars. And so um, with that and sustaining injuries, just really slipped into a depressive state and decided, you know, I'm going to go on ahead and and pursue this backup plan of accounting degree and um, ended up making really good connections throughout my uh, three or four years of playing and uh, ended up um, interviewing with two accounting firms, Ernst & Young and PricewaterhouseCoopers, and ended up getting uh, a, a good offer with PwC and uh, relocating from Orlando to Tampa, Florida. And while I was there, it was great. Like, it was a fabulous firm. I really enjoyed having a normal uh, life, if you will. And uh, I think after the first year, um, I kind of realized, okay, wait, this can't be it for me. Like, there's just something there that just is not feeling right. And so I had some sleepless nights. And um, it wasn't until 2016, I went to the ESPN Women's Sports uh, Summit up in Chicago. And um, I had went into a partnership with a friend of mine to do a uh, women's sports podcast. And while we we're there, just kind of scouting um, female athletes and Olympians, I kind of sit in the audience and I was like, I don't feel comfortable. I don't feel right. And I realized that I didn't really necessarily want it to interview other athletes. I wanted to still be interviewed, which meant that I wanted to still play golf. And I left on the terms of not having money and being sad um, with the game of golf. And so I said, listen, um, to my friend, I was like, listen, I think you deserve someone that's fully vested into this partnership. And I I think I'm going to go back and play again. And I don't know when it'll happen, but I'm going to do it. And so um, I kind of just put it out there in the universe. And uh, one thing led to another. And then I just finally took a leap of faith and left. PwC um, late spring of 2017 and decided to play professionally and I was going to figure it out. And uh, I've figured it out. I haven't. One thing that's kind of bothered me, especially after Q schools passed uh, a couple weeks ago, stage two is I haven't been able to regain LPGA status just yet. Um, But I do feel as though my game's still there. It's just really going deeper and really realizing you can still do it. And, um, 
you know, and, and have some type of success on the LPGA while I still want to play golf. Nice, nice. Let's give that up because I think, um, and welcome, Alexis. Thank you for coming on. We just added you in, you know, we just going to add you to the party. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> Let's give you an air horn. We got you with you up up in here, and uh, that is such a a, a great story because we're gonna day uh, delve deep into that subject about the bridge between college and going to the mini tours and the professional tours, and what challenges for a whole lot of reasons that is. And I and we went into a little bit of that last show, and we're gonna go into it again because we got live people playing right now alexis we're gonna get you caught up right now thanks again for coming we're gonna give you some more uh claps air horns just give us a quick bio uh and let the audience know who and what you're doing real quick yeah thanks for having me um good to see all all of your faces um yeah i'm alexis belton i'm from ruston louisiana um, go Saints, go Pelicans, which is the best NBA team in the league by far. Um, <laughs> and I played basketball my entire life, along with a lot of other sports. My parents had me in anything from fencing to boxing, did violin, everything you could think of. Um, the one thing that they didn't have me in was golf. And so not until the end of my junior year, I picked up a club for the first time and um, all came down to honestly a uh, my health teacher who was also the golf coach said hey we need a, another girl to participate um, do you want to play and at that point I was already committed to play playing college basketball at a d1 level um, and so I said no that's for old guys and um, <laughs> that's not for me and then he said well you get out of school all day and you get free food and I was like well what kind of free food in basketball we got like gas station That's and right. so they said oh we stop at Ruth's Chris I said oh sign me up and I can pick my outfit and it's like the whole package country club life um, and so I joined the golf team you know, as anyone that's a competitor, first and foremost, it's the ultimate competitor's game. And then from there, um, I think once anyone hits that one solid shot for the first time, they fall in love with the game of golf. And so that's what happened to me. And I've been hooked ever since, played college golf, at, finished my career of college golf at Texas Wesleyan University, um, did three years of long drive, uh, which was means to kind of get on tour and fund my dream of playing on the LPGA. Um, I had committed to being just in long drive and then the pandemic happened and it no longer existed. And so now I am uh, on Symmetra and uh, hopes to get the, the, the tour card next year. Nice, awesome. nice, let's give that up. Right, we ain't gonna get that up. We get that up for you, but it's all about them Lakers. Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on, Manny. Let's ask. So, Alexis, what's your what's your longest drive? Tell us your longest drive for us in the audience out here. Yeah, uh, I think my longest drive is like, honestly, I'm be completely honest. I have no idea what my longest drive is. <laughs> I know they have it somewhere at like 373 or something. That was an Arizona event, and I didn't even win. I got beat by a four, I think 408 drive or something like that. Um, but I just showed up to either win or get a check. So outside of that, <laughs> I really right. didn't know the number. I like that. I love that it. Works. I love it. Let's get that up. <laughs> yeah, them drives, man. That's 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 very very nice. Um, Big C, if you have any questions, because we about to, I'm going to dive deep into this uh, this bridge, and uh, but I want you guys to get some questions in before we go into. This yeah. Other. I have a I have a question for Anita. Um, I'm here in in the metropolis of Salisbury, North Carolina, 30 minutes from Charlotte, and the home of Livingston College. And so the thing is, Livingston College has a lot of uh, tremendous golfers from Uganda. Um, mm. Yeah, they're they're really good. They they went down to Alabama and mopped up. I mean, they were one through five and just killed everybody. I mean, these guys are really really good. And so. What was the transition like for you coming from another country uh, to the U.S. 
and you know learning everything about the u.s and matriculating into the university of south carolina and becoming a pretty daggone good golfer <laughs> well i moved here when i was about 12 and a half and that's the first time i ever left home so of course, I mean, moving across the ocean, basically, I basically cried for, I would say two months straight because, you know, I was the youngest one. Everyone was about junior or senior in high school. I was in eighth grade. So that was a bit tough. My accent was off. People didn't really understand what I was saying. So that was also like a bit hard, but I think I was just with, um, I was with other players, you know, that moved away from home, not necessarily moving across the ocean. They moved maybe from the West coast to the East coast. So, you know, I found a bond with them and I also had a player from Nigeria. I don't know if you know him, Tox Pedro. He's from Nigeria. He was also in the same academy. So I basically looked up to him as like my bigger brother. Um, so he definitely helped me through it. Uh, but also I felt like I was, you know, I was like a wild child, you know. I mean, what I mean by wild child, I mean, I just ate chocolate basically every day because I could actually, you know, just use my money. Um, but, you know, I didn't have my parents telling me, yes, no, all this. So, you know, I had to learn to be independent. I had to learn, you know, accountability and all that stuff. Um, but moving to South Carolina, I would say I've already stayed in um, college, I mean, uh, eighth grade to senior year for five years. So moving to South Carolina wasn't that big of a, like the transition wasn't that big of a deal because I've already been on my own for such a long time. Um, and also Hilton Head in South Carolina, University of South Carolina, very familiar with the place. So that wasn't that hard. Um, but I would say the biggest the biggest change would be moving from or just the change of environment, change of people, change of culture. I, that mm. was that was big. That was massive. And like I had to like relearn the whole, you know, how to adapt because I'm from Africa. You know, like it's just just had to learn to adapt like to cultures, languages. I mean, there's like you know um, languages in terms of my accent and all that stuff. But yeah, I mean, it was hard. It was hard. But when I look back on it, it was basically a blessing. But do you get, and one more question for her, Manny, do you get, because I'm, I'm on the driving range with some of the guys yeah. from Uganda. And so, you know, they're playing at the country clubs. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> and so, you you know, you had all, all these white folk around. Do you yeah. get some of the some of the craziest questions that they've been asked? Like, do you ride a line to home from work? Oh, from oh heck yeah. I mean, I, I, at this point, like after my first year, I started going with it. When people would be like, do you have cell phones? I'm like, no, we actually use pigeons. Like, you know, my pigeon actually coming tomorrow, you know, to send messages. Right. You know, at some point, I just started going with it because I've asked the dumbest questions, you know. Oh, do you have buses? Like, how do you get to squash? And we actually have elephant stops, you know. You know? So, no, so I just started rolling with it. But yeah, I mean, I've had you know really bad questions like oh like do you live in huts you know they show me pictures of africa and i mean at some point there's only so much you can correct people because at this point 2020 at that point like 2016 2015 i'm not gonna start educating about what africa looks like <laughs> you right. know you exactly. know what you don't so but yes yeah. i can i can definitely relate with them with gotcha. all the questions wow yes. <laughs> good job, good job. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah, that's ridiculous. And you know, we got Google. People know. I think they're exactly. just gonna be funny and they're not funny. Um, uh, Trish, any question? I do. So Lauren, um Larry Ship in our audience say he asked, What has been your biggest obstacles to your success? Um, anybody can take this and this question, um, and then anybody else can chime in from there. Maybe Brianne, we start with you. Yeah. Um, I mean, honestly, it's, it's a, a thing of finances, I think, of like mm -hmm. being able to have the financial freedom to play as many events as you want, but also be able to afford to like pay your coaches, um, pay your whatever club you might be a member of, um, pay for your equipment, stuff like that. Uh, so I think that's probably been like the, the biggest obstacle for me, at least. Okay. I got it. I got it. And and I'll just jump in right there because we we um and we're gonna let the ladies go, but we just wanna let's interject real quick. Uh, golf locker room. We went there last week, and it's just so people. I think people don't have the right idea of how it works to move to the professional level. I think people are thinking about basketball or football or baseball and think it's some kind of draft and you get drafted to the uh, LPGA and you get a, you get a minimum hundred thousand and you're like ranked, whatever, whatever. 
And I just believe people think that people don't know that, you know, it's like contract work. You have to fund your own journey to the pros, no matter how good you are, no matter what rank you was in college, it's not a draft. You have to actually make it happen on your own. And since it is professional, you need a team and you still need to eat. And that's more expensive than college. And I think some of us that want to support have a disconnect and don't think about it in those terms. And I think, you know, us like a podcast, we have to get the word out and understand that our golfers are great and they've made this journey in from from juniors to high school to college. And now they're ready to matriculate into the pros and they still need support and help. And no, there's no bag of gold after college because they were good waiting for them. They have to pay for everything to get into the pros. And I think we need to do a better job in explaining that to our golf community, our minority golf community, because I don't think some get it or know, but I don't think everyone knows. And uh, I'll ask the ladies who are going through this journey. Do you find that to be true? Do you think like, oh, people think you're rich already because you were, you you know, you were at college and you were good? Or do they understand the struggle and want to help? And anyone can answer that. I'll answer that. Um, I think it's mixed. Uh, especially now with, you know, we're in the age of information. So there's a lot of information out there that, you know, lets people know that golf's expensive and you have to have support and it's not a draft and you don't get an upfront, upfront check. So I find that um, when I first started, I remember distinctly that there was an article that was written. I don't remember where, but someone sent it to me online and it said um, basically after I got my card that uh, I was going to be rich <laughs> and um, didn't have any other explanations of how that was going to happen. But it was just basically I got status now I'm going to be rich. And so there is that disconnect, but I think it's evolving now with just the fact that we're all having conversations about how much does it cost to play a season on the Symmetra and or the LPGA tour. Um, in the past, you know, and to kind of go back to that question of, you know, what has been the big, biggest obstacle? Um, well, earlier in my career, I find that it was finances. And then after taking a break and, and coming back, um, I kind of changed my mindset and stopped talking about that narrative. I got really tired of explaining the same story over and over again. And because I felt like I was manifesting that in my life. And so I finally changed the story, the narrative. And even though I did see it quickly, but I saw things started to change for me. I started meeting the right people that wanted to support my career. And for the past couple of years, I've been very fortunate enough to have support that I wish I would have had uh, early in my career. Because I think obviously things would have been different. Uh, but needless to say, um, it, you know, it's almost as if you just want to post online how much it costs to play golf. Golf yeah. is a small business. <laughs> you are the owner and you need to go find the money at the beginning of every year. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. And, and people hate to hear about money. And uh, but that's what it takes to get that wheel rolling. Uh, so when we talk about that, when we talk about the money um, roundabout. How much would you say it is a year to kind of participate in the events that you need to participate in to qualify? What do you what would you say or that roundabout amount would be? Because I'm quite sure we have absolutely no idea what that number looks like. Um, my personal budget, I have two budgets, um, but for just for golf, it was roughly for a full season, anywhere from sixty to seventy thousand dollars, and that depends yeah. on that. That's you doing everything you need to do, like hire a caddy, you need to fly, rental car, um, staying in a hotel, like all of that. That's like mm -hmm. probably the biggest part of the budget. But if you need to minimize that, you can cut corners cut, to cut costs. But that was my personal budget for the year. Gotcha. Okay. OK, that sounds and that sounds pretty reasonable because I was going to say in between what, 60 and 100 to to for a team and everything you just yes, named a team, because it is a team. If you want to be successful, mm -hmm. you know, you can only do so much 
and worry about so much and be uh, totally focused on your craft and winning tournaments. If you're worrying about yeah. everything else, how can you, how can you, how can you win now? Other than minority golf, how do pretty much do, is it like, if I come from wealth, my family just still supports me and gets me into the tour. How do, and just not us, how does everybody fund their way into the, uh, the mini tours and the big tours? How do we know that? How, how, how generally speaking, how do people fund that, 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 that part of their life when they're ready to go on the mini tours and their tours, do they get sponsorships or some sponsorships, more apt to help certain people than others how how does that work anyone i know for me uh, my parents i've been very fortunate to have you know parents who support support me so they help me quite a bit but i think i just struggle with that need to be independent you know i think i'm like rushing the process like i want to be independent but again i tend to realize that you know i am fortunate to have parents that support me um i think with sponsorships at just coming out of college at our level, I think people um, uh, rely on sponsorships for balls and clubs, you know, not necessarily money. It's just, you know, buying uh, balls, clubs, gloves, all the things, you're basically your equipment. And I know there are people who work during the off season um, to, you know, gather some money to be able to fund them like during the season. That's what I've heard so far, but I'm so new to professional golf that, you know, I don't really know the whole scope of it. Okay. Okay. Um, I yeah. could, you know, piggyback off of that since I've been in golf for a, exactly. professional golf for a while. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, on the, the other options, uh, you know, you can find a uh, angel investors or you can find just regular investors that, you know, may want a percentage back. That's an option. Um, you definitely, like Anita said, you can work in the off season, but I find you're going to have to have a really good job in the off season for about three to four months to be able to support uh, a big budget, uh, you know, to play, whether you're trying to gain status on a tour or if you already have status to, to play on the tour uh, for, the, for the whole season. Um, you, again, if you have parents that like Anita said, uh, you can definitely um, have them support you. Um, also there's, uh, I mean, I wonder if I'm missing anything. Alexis, you could, she get kicked out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she yeah. must have some really bad Wi Fi right now. <laughs> she, on, she on that janky internet. <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> out the whole time. Um, I, I think I've pretty much touched on, you know, everything. I know some people saved money um, in college where uh, they saved up and were able to at least support their uh, first two years uh, on tour. Um, but uh, that's got, and sponsorships. I mean, you be you have to be in the right place at the right time to meet the right people, mm -hmm. and especially people that are wanting uh, to support you. And um, I, I just think that it just depends on really your mindset and how you view yourself and your confidence to be able to approach people and and be willing to accept, um, you know, a rejection potentially. I mean, they could say, no, I just don't want to support or no, I don't have it. And just like, okay, like that no is one step closer to a yes. True, true, true. Thanks for that. Now, and this is for all three of you guys. Did you know how expensive it would be? And was you planning or did anyone lay it out to you? This is how it's going to be when you're ready to go pro. Did you guys know the budgetary concerns and the demands of going pro when you were still in college, like your second or third year in college? Did you understand? I mean, yes and no. Okay, carry on with uh, yeah, yes and no. Because like, I'm very blessed to have uh, my parents do a lot of the, um, not just like paying for things, but like actually planning the financial side of it. So like my mom books my hotel and my flights and all of that. Um, and so we kind of understood how much it was gonna take, but I think like in terms of, um, I guess investing in your future of like building, like you said, building that team around you, that part I think has become uh, a little bit more expensive than we were thinking. Okay. 
So is that yeah. swing coaches? Is that mental coaches? Like, so yeah. what, who's, who's all on the team? I I have a swing coach, a putting coach, a short game coach, a trainer, a mental coach, um, and that's it. So I have like five different coaches. Um, wow. Yeah. Is that across the board, ladies? Uh, I just have a mental coach and a swing coach. And I just started seeing a putting coach once in a while. Haven't seen him in a bit, but mostly yeah, just mental coach and a swing coach. Wow. Uh, I'm going to have to add a mental coach now. Um, and uh, I'm switching swing coaches. Uh, actually, now I switched. So, um, okay. And I think he might just be the all around, you know, short game putting. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a trial period right now. Hey, hey Shasta, that's a that's a good transition in terms of when do you know that um, you're at the end of the road with a coach and making a transition to a different coach? When do you when do you know that? Um, I uh, figured this out after stage two of um, actually the last month of me competing. I, you know, I I just. I think my coach was knowledgeable and he was really tough and he was a good coach, but I don't know if it's the right fit for me. And I didn't think it was because I still could not solve an issue, a technical issue. And to me, it was like, okay, either I'm not processing this correctly or my body's not allowing me to do it, which means that it's going against my natural flow of my swing. And I got to find somebody that can work with what I have and just, enhance it under pressure and so that's when i decided after stage two i was like okay like something's got to change because it was it seemed like it was getting better but then it's like plateau and then start going back downhill and i was just like this is it like i gotta make a change now wow mm -hmm. to piggyback off you uh, manny like when you said did we know how expensive it was well when i first came to america um well i didn't know anything about college golf you know, career, like, you know, career in golf. I just knew I was going to America to play golf. You know, Hannah Montana, all that stuff. That's what I knew <laughs> about America coming here. And I thought, like, oh, like when you make it on pros, that's one of those people that's like professional athlete. You know, you make it on tour, you're gonna be a millionaire. <laughs> you know, so that's basically what I thought about golf until, like, you know, I actually got into it. I'm like, oh, you actually have to, you know, win some tournaments to be a millionaire for this. <laughs> but yeah, I didn't, I didn't know anything too. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, I think that's a great story. And it is uh, just unique into the self how golf is to get to the pro level. It's just, you know, it's really all on you guys to just do that. And families, of course, you know, we, we all no matter what endeavors, we all need family if, if, if they can help. Um, Trish, any questions? I do. I do. I do. Because like so the ladies um the whole sponsorship piece um you know i know shasta you've been in, in the game you know and doing your thing for a good little minute and you ladies as well so my question is do you ever come into a spot like how do you decipher good help from bad help is there is that ever a situation where you know like you want sponsorship you need sponsorship they know that they could probably help you in the game of golf do you ever run across a situation where you know, you have to figure out, you know, hey, yes, I need this, but, you know, this probably isn't the right help that I need. Does that ever come across, you know, to be, by yes. being lady golfers? Yes. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> yes. Yes. Wow. I, and so, been... and so how do you, yeah, how do you handle those situations? Um, I have had to be direct, uh, disappear. Um, mm. block. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, it has been <laughs> I don't know the lady. I don't really haven't shared a whole lot with the ladies about uh, I've only shared very snippets of some of the experiences I've had um, with you yeah. know people that wanted to support, but the exchange has not been uh, very pure or genuine and mm. so um, and even just the right fit. And right. uh, sometimes you have to, I think for me, how I was able to make the decision was I went with my gut feeling. Um, I'm learning now that my gut always tells me against logic if it's the right fit or not. 
And Mm -hmm. um, at this point, I'm using my gut to make decisions, um, you know, providing myself options to make decisions. And there's been a couple of opportunities that I have turned down because the initial feeling was this didn't feel right. There's something about this doesn't feel right. And I just like, hey, I got to sleep at night and I got to be comfortable with myself and look at myself in the mirror. Um, And and I mean, I love golf, but sometimes some of them will deal with it worth it, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I feel that because that that's that's a great question, Trish. Because you can dig down into that. Because not only is it a a, a a finance and a resource thing, sometimes we don't always give and think about ladies' sports in general gets the short end of the stick. So now you're struggling mm-hmm. to get on the tour, and then you're a triple threat because it's a lady. And yeah, you know, there's thirsty people out there. In our business, everybody's greedy and everybody has uh, some arterial motives. But then you add the female aspect to it, then it's another layer of yeah. of can we trust this person in our circle? Can we trust this person right. in our team? Because you know, is he here to help or is he here to pray? You know, hope, hopefully yeah. just to help. So and how to it, decipher? It, yeah, exactly. I know that's tough. I know that's tough. That maybe. Uh, men don't always have to think like that they be like oh come on you want to stock me good more money for me but that's craziness so yeah that that that's a that was a great question uh trish i'm gonna let you keep going oh so we have alex in the audience he's asking do any of you currently have um any equipment sponsors no i I wish (laughs) to everything so across the board no not yet, I not yet, not I yet. Right now, it's just, I think Callaway does a really good job and Ping are really great with the women as far as giving clubs and um, and and kind of being there if you need something for free. Um, mm-hmm. I've definitely, Long Drive's given me the opportunity to work with, a, with three different companies um, and uh, kind of learn how the industry works from that side of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but right now, I think two of the best companies that I've seen kind of work for the women's side um, and be very uh, kind of fast and responding and different things of that sort has definitely been Callaway and Ping as far as providing equipment for us. Okay. Nice, nice, awesome, nice. Awesome, awesome. But not enough equipment to give to all our friends and family, just equipment for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're trying to get y'all on the tour. We're not trying to give it to the friends and family. We, yeah, to get exactly. we, don't, want, we don't want uncle out there with beer with Sif taking all the free equipment. <laughs> <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> Alexis, crazy. so question for you. So with you doing the long drive, so is there a big, like, does um, doing long drive, does it help you better? <laughs> God darn Alexis. It's, my thing's talking to me, but when you, um, <laughs> um, but, but I was trying to say is with you doing long drive and you, uh, you know, making the path to the tour, um, does that help you in your game? Does it hinder you in your game? And I ask this because, you know, I know when, women and men that both do the long drive that have done the long drive. And I know some just say, Hey, lo- they're just long drivers and they don't make good golfers. What do you say about that statement? Well, whoever's probably saying that, they're just probably people that don't even know how to swing a club. But all together, that it's something when people say things like that, it stems from insecurity, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so it doesn't really affect me at all. I think long drive was such a great experience for me to understand, one, how the golf industry works. I It was a really quick um, of learning kind of what we've all talked about beforehand of like who to trust, um, what 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 companies or companies that work for you even they could be an outstanding company but does it align with your brand um Mm -hmm. and different things of that sort so it really helped me on the side of understanding the golf business um it definitely helped me as far as getting more distance and kind of understanding a little bit more about um the swing and clubs themselves because long drives really based off of what type of you know, shaft do you use and different things of that sort. And I really had to learn how to maximize what I was doing because I used the standard club for um, majority or most of my career. So uh, those were really great nuggets that I got. But then it also 
uh, because of kind of the things that I was learning and really quickly and falling into um, a place where people would recognize me at some, at, I remember someone, I was in a, on a flight in Atlanta that was like, oh, and I was like, oh, and I'm kind of like a introvert extrovert. <laughs> so I can appear to be very extroverted, but I love like my me time and I'm very close knitted. And so um, it kind of honestly spiraled me into a, a place of depression and a place of trying to learn how to utilize my social media. I haven't been on since March, um, which is now I'm ready to get back on, but um, learning how to balance both kind of um, what it looks like to be not only just a golfer, but a brand um, right. and what it looks like yeah. to know who to trust, what it looks like to know where to go and what opportunities to take, even if it's a pro-am or if it's a, um, you know, whatever it may be, how does that affect your body going into playing the next week? Long drive definitely looked like for me doing maybe a clinic on a Monday in Philadelphia, then flying to, you know, Arizona the next day to try and compete for long drive and then fly and I get into a Symmetra event and then fly back, you know, to New York to try and do a Symmetra event. So learning how to juggle all those things were definitely great because I know my limits and I know where to go and where, what not to do. That was, that, that was awesome. fantastic because we got uh, a question from No Fear Golf and it kind of, it's a quick segue into what you were just saying. Are any of you leveraging your social media to chase the dream? If so, are there any jewels you can share from leveraging it? And I guess it goes back to being your own brand, being your own business of one with a team trying to fund this this great journey and you know you guys play golf but you don't know about branding or even care but you, i guess you gotta know if you want to nah. survive or do you have people helping you and you, you gotta trust those yeah. people too to come right. in because everyone has a story like i can make your brand the biggest brand but we are in a social media age we are in an internet age there is ways you can touch funding and support through social media you just got to know how to do it and do you guys now employ or have a social media person in your team and anyone um, can answer or do you I'll, think I'll it's important real, i'll speak real quick i absolutely love branding i love all things um creative social media i used to do a lot of photography um i hate it for myself that's like a whole different <laughs> game uh ball game and, and you know totally different when you actually have to brand yourself. But I think someone that's really, really done well um, on this call this year, as far as branding themselves and, and utilizing social media is definitely Shasta. Liar. Yeah. No, I was about to say that. I was about to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a liar. I've gained more followers not being on it than you have, but you know, I'll let you know <laughs> flowers. <laughs> No, I was about to say that actually, Shasta, like I actually look up to you in terms of social media, like yeah. I don't do social media, I, I, I hate, I not I hate social media, but something I'm learning like one year out of college is that you actually kind of need social media, you know, yeah, me, um, no, no social something, media. yeah, you do need it, it's something that I'm learning, but Shasta is definitely an inspiration I'd say for us because you know, every moment it's like, pronation, this, that. I was like, hey. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And Thanks, a, little sisters. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. It's, that is awesome. It is, um, it's, you know, I really, I think I'm omnivert as well because I can be in a room and just talk and just be bubbly. And then at the same time, I want to curl up and not talk to anybody and mm. i kind of had that approach with social media it was like a love-hate relationship uh for over the years and i just was not sure how do i want to go about it like i know who i am i know what my brand is but i don't know how to put it out there and so um i've been i was inconsistent for a while then i got more consistent and then i i have a great team um, behind me and uh, my agent. Um, it took a while to get a, a really good agent uh, because mm. I've gone through, again, people that just wasn't the right fit, really were on the same page. And so now this is such a great fit with Alex and John that I feel very happy. Uh, we started working together um, in uh, March 
of this past year and uh they they actually helped me with some of my social media and um they're uh, the uh, agency is the, the society llc and so john is my uh, personal agent and if i can't post he'll do it for me right. and you know that's part of our agreement and you know i communicate to him you know hey sometimes i'm at tournaments like during tournament rounds, like I don't want to be on social media. I don't want to be posting because even if I don't receive any negative comments, if it's positive comments, what happens is your expectations for yourself go uh, much higher. And so then you're putting all this extra pressure in yourself. You get tight and you know, you shoot 66. Now you shoot 77. Mm. The next round. Mm. And it's like, you know, Hey, how do I balance that? And so I've been fortunate enough to find someone uh, that can help me do that. But um, I think too, you know, just really asking people to help with that on the road <laughs> has uh, increased um, because it's hard to do it by yourself too. No so, doubt. It's looking good. Yeah. It's looking good. We're loving it. Thank you. We're working on it. Yeah, follow, follow everyone. You know, Brianne, Shasta, Anita. Mm -hmm. Oh, please, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we'll have all the, uh, like, yeah, because we can see Brianne, Shasta, Anita, and Alexis. None of you guys have at in front of your name. That's a no-no. Always have the at. Always put your Instagram name oh, on anything. Cool. So if you do other podcasts beside us, anytime you log on anywhere, put your at whatever so people can automatically follow you mm -hmm. because followers are supporters. For the or most something part. new every day. That yeah, was a yeah, little always put we your at. Yeah. Yeah. Always we're going to add it in the show notes. Yeah, we're going to add it in the show notes. <laughs> but always put your Instagram name on when you're on stuff like this. So it's easy for people to just be like, oh, yeah, yeah, at Anita, such as, oh, at Shasta, oh, at, at it. Look at us, at Sif, at Miss Clark's Golf Life, at Manny Up One. That is not my full name, but that is my Instagram name for social media. Um, yeah. Sif, you've been biting and looking, and I know <laughs> you was getting on these ladies' nerves when I wasn't in the room talking about you want to beat on them and bet them, and I know they're going to take every last penny of your money <laughs> every well, last penny of your money but we're gonna let you ask a question non-gambling related well alexis what she wasn't on the chat when i was actually challenging the other ladies but when she came on i'm gonna I, you know you hitting the ball 300 and 400 yards i'm gonna be quiet but uh anyway do you find and this is for all of young ladies and I asked the question, I think, on last week. Do you feel, and most of you guys, at the level that you're playing, you've probably grown up in country clubs or been affiliated with some of the top-tier country clubs, you know, across the country. Do you feel as though that you're yourselves when you're around country club folk, or do you find yourself code switching? Oh. <laughs> I mean, and, and it's, it's okay because, you know, at one, at, at, at one point in my life, you know, it was code switching because of what we thought that country club was and um, what it was to be. And then, you know, but it makes you a little uncomfortable. Then you, f you figure out and say, well, damn, who the hell is that? I'm, I'm talking a certain kind of way. I'm acting a certain <laughs> kind of way. And then, it, and then what it does, it, it, brings on a it brings on a little bit more pressure. It, it makes you a little more tight because you're not who you are. Did you find yourself ever doing that or have done that? Well, for to me, I think, I think okay. Go, go, Anita. No, so I have a different perspective because I'm African. Um, so coming here, like I didn't necessarily know anything about, you know, black culture in America. Like I knew nothing. I went to an all white school, you know, like all my friends basically in college, except my Nigerian brother, all white. So I didn't really know about, you know, black culture until I, you know, went to college, even in college, like I was the only black person on my team. I basically, as, like, you know, I hung around all white people because we didn't really have that many black people, I would say with like, you know, in golf, but going to college golf, I remember the first person I met was Alexis, actually, I was at a golf tournament 
And you know, there's another black person and Alexis comes up to me and they start talking to me. I'm like, okay, I feel a bit comfortable. And then when you go to mini toy events, you know, you're looking for the black people, you know, you're like counting, like, you know, okay, I gotta go talk to her, you know, kind of thing. So I think professional golf has made me, I would say, closer to black culture and then meeting everyone, Shasta, like Garibi, Alexis, you know, even Brianne, like meeting everyone, you know, I would say it's different. Like now I feel like I'm more into black culture than, you know, when I was in college or high school. So my, my I think, perspective is a little bit different than other people's. Nice, okay. nice. Shasta. And I would say, okay. uh, Yes, I do uh, find that the code switching happens um, more often than kind of have to. I just, you know, I think I'm in a, a me and I, I could say maybe Brianne and I are in an interesting situation because we're both uh, mixed. You know, um, Brianne's uh, biracial, which I'll let her <laughs> share her experience, but um, I'm multiracial. And so I find that, uh, you know, when people look at me initially, they're not sure. They're mm -hmm. trying to figure it out. Um, and then I start to speak and then they're like, okay, I kind of got an idea. And then, you know, even within our community, it's, right. you know, I, I find that sometimes uh, I, I throw a lot of people off. Uh, they're expecting me to be a certain way. And then when I'm myself, it's like, oh, we weren't expecting that. You know, this, this, mm -hmm. the stereotypical, you're light skin, you're stuck up, um, <laughs> uppity. Uh, you know, I, I kind of went, gone through that a lot. And so um, I find that I am far from that. I'm very down to earth, um, you know, love to bring people together and, uh, you know, goofy sometimes silly and so um i find that yes the code switching does happen but i also have to deal with that within our own community as well and so uh, it's something i've gotten used to and i sometimes expect sometimes it doesn't happen you know i'm just kind of embraced and it's fine uh but also you know i didn't grow up in a country club setting i grew up at a, a public course and um i find that i was still doing that there too especially at tournaments again no minorities, dad died the only minorities there. And it was okay, like we need to kind of have uh, everything like more of a proper right. dialect, if you will, uh, yeah. happening at the tournament. Alexis. Alex, Labusi. Well, Brianne, do you wanna follow up on that? Yeah, yeah, I'll jump in. Um, I think I, I got lucky growing up in California because I saw a lot of um, minorities at golf courses. Um, I also mostly started out at a public course. I didn't really start going to country clubs until I was in college. Um, so I never, I never really saw it as code switching necessarily. It was just when like older people were around me, I, I wanted to be a little bit more uh, polite, I guess. But um I don't know. I, there were so many, there are a lot of black members at my club currently. So it's nice to be able to like feel a little bit more natural around them. But um, even like the white members at my club, they, they know who I am. So I don't feel like I have to hide anything in oh, that nice. sense. Yeah. Cali, Cali's a little different. I'm in Cali too. And you know, we're, we were mm -hmm. blessed to, it's a big golfing community out in Cali and at the mm -hmm. uh, public courses and it's, you know, West and it's somewhat a little more liberal. There, there's still, it's still foolishness, but it's a little more, mm -hmm. it's a little more liberal and, you know, uh, a, a few of us sprinkled all over the place. Thank goodness. It's still just a few, <laughs> but we're sprinkled, sprinkled. Mm -hmm. uh, no question. Okay. Sif, Unless stop the betting and, continue on with a great question well we had the you know alexis has to uh you know bring the end up in that same yeah, question yeah, that yeah. I had. <laughs> yeah well i i think it's really interesting because we all grew up completely different ways and i think that's mm -hmm. you know more so of how we are as in a as a black community in general is that we all have such different experiences and we do have such similar as well uh, i'm from the south and so obviously uh things in the south can be a little different um, but I love my hometown. I love, I, once I did start playing golf, which was super late, I didn't get into the country club setting until a little bit later in life. 
Um, and it, I kind of think of like, think of it like I'm going to work. And so I think in general, if I'm meeting somebody new, anything of that sort, I'm always a little bit um, hesitant to show all of me. And so they're going to get the proper Alexis. They're going to get Alexis um, that, you know, is just pretty much really boring. <laughs> and so I think when I think about that, especially going into the country club setting and the golf world in general, you don't really get a lot of time um, as a player when you're practicing, whether that be at a golf course or at a tournament or you're doing an event to actually get to know the people around you, unless you're playing for fun or you're just, you know, enjoying your time out there. And so I think once that happens, whether that be at a country club at my home course or anywhere else, then I feel a lot more comfortable um, to be who I am. Just like those people, whoever they might be, whatever race they might be, will feel comfortable to show their complete selves to me as well. So uh, Mm -hmm. obviously there's a lot of things that we can change and get better. Um, But overall, I've had a positive experience. Nice, 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 nice. nice. Uh, Hey, what do you guys... um, um, I've, I've, I've actually watched this, you know, your golf swings, and you guys have some amazing golf swings. I mean, just unbelievable, picture perfect. Yeah. What separates you? I know you guys are, um, you know, you're aspiring to, 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 you know, have longevity on the the tour. But what separates you from, say, some of the uh, young young ladies in the top tier? We had Tim O'Neill and I think Chris Hanna, and what was the other gentleman um, a couple of weeks ago? Um, my, we're, we're old, so I my, well, I'm yeah, old. Yeah, we I'm got old. we got show fog. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> anyway, but they, <laughs> but they talked about they talked about um the best golf that they possibly had was within four weeks. So they said you're going to win. You know, you're going to make the most money in in a four week period because that's when you're going to be at your best. It's when you're going to be hot. Um, do you agree with that? philosophy well well you kind of you kind of paraphrasing you're confusing them just a little he said it was ebbs and flows and you could go on a run for a four week run within your ebbs and flows that's, that's and what be he playing does. the best golf you're playing at that time and you could probably go on a four week run at that time and then it could come back so it wasn't just like oh you're gonna do four weeks and you're gone no well he no he actually it's said he, he no he he did say the ebb and flow, but he said you're gonna play uh, four weeks of good golf. It doesn't have to be consecutively, but it, mm-hmm. in a four week period, he said that's when you're gonna make your most money. I mean, I do happen with me. Hmm? <laughs> that didn't happen this year for me. It was very sporadic. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, would, I, I mean, would say the same. Yeah, I think for me, what I'm working on, I would say, like, you asked the question about what makes you different. Um, I think something I've learned on tour is everybody hits it good. I mean, some, you have a handful of people who hit it far. Everyone strikes it good. Everyone putts. And for me, what I would say is I'm trying to be, just be more consistent. Like you say, you can have four weeks of great golf, you know, but if you miss the cut the other, I don't know, 15 weeks, you know, I'm not sure if that's really paying the bills. But I would say consistency is probably, you know, the biggest thing, I think, with professional golf. Um, at least you have something coming in and you're always learning every week. And I would say mental, um, just staying in the present and not getting ahead of yourself. So what I'm personally working on is just my mental game and try to be like mentally strong, um, mentally tough on the course. I would say that for me would be the biggest thing. Um, but in terms of four weeks, yeah, I mean, you you know, it's a game of misses. You probably, if you win four times out of the year, you're probably getting your card. <laughs> you know, that's that's just the reality of things. But I think consistency is probably pretty big in professional golf. Okay. Definitely. What, Thank you. What that. do you ladies? Okay. So, what do you ladies, when y'all are competing, what do y'all enjoy the absolute very most when you're like out there competing, doing your thing? What do you enjoy the most when you're out there in competition? And any of you can take that question. It's such a simple question, but it's like, it's good, but <laughs> it's, it's just like, 
What do you enjoy the most? Mm-hmm. Oh, I think I have something. I think when I'm playing well, the feeling that I love the most is hitting a really good drive off the tee. Um, which, like, you, you can't beat it. If you're out driving your playing partners and you just smash one, like, it's the best feeling in the world, I, I think. Nice. Okay. I think wet, my wedge play. My If my wedge play is spot on, it is probably one of the best feelings because I feel as, as if, if when I have a wedge in my hand, I have a really good chance of burying the hole uh, without even hitting the shot. Like it just, it's a great feeling when you're dialed in on those wedges. And it's, all of us are long ball hitters. We all, yeah, we all hit it far. So most of the time we do have wedges into the greens. Nice. Wow. Nice. I would say ball striking. Like I really like I like you know with my irons. Um, I think that gives me confidence. If I'm hitting it good that day, I don't care where I hit it, you know. But I also think creativity. Like I just love. I mean, I don't want to be in the woods like every day, but you know when I'm in every time when I'm in the woods, you know, there's that good feeling of like making par or birdie out of there, like trying to create a shot. Like I just I love That's creating right. shots. You know, I try to find something. I, I like that a lot. <laughs> a, little, a little Nicholson, a little savvy. I, Don't care where yeah, it's at. I'm, I'm going to get up and down. <laughs> I definitely agree with Anita there. Like, definitely creativity. I think when I'm playing my best, it's like almost a uh, – like I'm not in my body and I'm not even present. Like someone can be mm-hmm. like, oh, what did – I don't know. Someone's like, oh, what did they have on that hole? I'm like, I don't know. I'm not – who's that? Oh, I'm playing with somebody? <laughs> So I think that's like zone. that's like the best feeling is just zone the zone that you get and Killing. and the creativity is just everything's heightened the sense of the mm-hmm. you know ball being right at the center of the club face everything you can just feel that's the best part um to me yeah nice very nice very nice very nice I, can I that up too. The, one of the best parts of like being on tour this past year is obviously attributes to these other three girls that are on the call but like laughing while like because it's so tense out there um and so like being on a putting green and like someone sending a text and we just start laughing or like you know seeing anita in her swim trunks after she <laughs> comes works out and like what are you doing like, her, like that. you know, <laughs> you know and, um, I think, yeah, that's been one of the best parts are, are the meals that we get to share and the laughs that we get that's to have. Dope. Like, that's nothing beats awesome. those memories that, that we'll have. That <laughs> is hella dope because, yeah. you know, I'm sure for years it, you guys didn't have, like, a crew. You know, it was just you by yourself, trugging along, you know, grinding it out, and you had nobody on the other side of the course knowing that they grinding it out, too, and you'll meet at the clubhouse when it's over that is dope to have support and because everybody's on their own journey but you guys are sharing the struggles that's that's just awesome and hopefully we'll get more and more people out there at least that's what we're trying to do trish yes so i do i have one more thing and then you know so one thing i did want to ask is like for the young ladies that'll come back on and watch the show or the fathers that'll have their young girls watch this show later you know this podcast um what would be one tidbit one piece of wisdom that you would give to a young lady that's aspiring to play golf or that's playing golf right now um each one of you what would be like what would be or if you were to tell your younger self what would you tell that golfer i would probably say play as many tournaments with people that are way better than you as you possibly can. Um, Not only getting those competitive rounds for yourself, but to just be able to see people that play better than you and be able to learn from their games. It's like, it's so much better than being able to practice by yourself. Nice. Dope. Nice. Shasta? Anyone? Anyone? Yeah. Because. uh, Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry, I was uh, zoned out for a second. Because um, I, I actually was thinking about what Brianne said and, and I wish I would have done more of that, you know, had that opportunity. Um, but I would say from what I've seen so far um, with some of the, you know, the parents with their, their, their children is, I would say 
support them, but also make sure that they want to play and mm -hmm. that they have the enthusiasm to play. Um, because if you have to force them to go practice mm -hmm. and when they're at the course and they just kind of look upset or they just don't look like they want to be there, that's a really good sign that they don't want to play golf. And, yeah. and, and to be honest, like if they don't want to be there, they're not going to play well. They're, they're just, they're going to be miserable. And, and I don't think it's really worth it. Um, I, I would say that, you know, really pay attention to how, your child is is uh, the body language, how you're how they're feeling at the course. You know, ask them questions. You know, are you still enjoying? It? Are you having fun? You know, and and really pay attention and, and see if they're being honest about it because you really do have to love golf in, in order to you know thrive and to you know have a junior career, a collegiate career, and even professional career. It really starts when you're young and really having that uh, deep down love for the game. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. That makes sense too. It's expensive. Um, you know, it's a hard game. And okay, let's dig deeper. And anyone can ask that. What age do you think you should be watching your juniors to know if they're really loving the game? Like if they're just kind of disinterested at a certain age, you can pretty much say they just want to just be there for fun and they're not taking it serious. Is there an age? that you can see they're still not really taking it serious. They really, their body language says they don't want to be there. They're 14, 12, 13. What's the, what's the age that, and they've been doing it since they were 10. So let's say they were doing it since they were 10. What age would we know that they're just pretty much, they like it, but they really don't like it. What's a good age to, to tell our parents or for them to be watching the signs of, uh, uh, of them being disinterested as far as, uh, playing golf 10 or is there an age I, I would <laughs> high say, school I would say high school too okay because I think like kids kids I know for me I did not want to work not only did I not want to work hard I didn't want to work period so <laughs> like if I had started golf before I was 15 I know for a fact like I would have looked like I didn't like it that much um but I think there you can tell a difference between being burnt out from a sport and just not enjoying it at the time. And so I think once you get to around high school age is where you can kind of see the difference a little bit more. Oh, yeah, I mean, I, I agree with that. But I'm also thinking about my college years. I did have some players who got into college and, you know, I mean, all American, they want to play, you know, professional golf. But as the year went by or as the, you know, years in college went by, they're like, nah, this is really not for me. So I'm thinking about that question and it's like, you know, I've seen different, I mean, again, this is just my first year or second year. So I've seen different years where people are like, yeah, this is not for me. And people just keep doing it just because of parents or time or I put so much money into this. I got to keep going. But like Shasta said, you got to really love it to keep going. Yeah. I, I feel think like the, the biggest better thing... question would be, go for it. Oh, sorry. I think the biggest thing is just creating an environment where like, your kid feels comfortable telling you that they don't love it anymore. Because I think that's the biggest thing of like, kids don't feel like they can tell their parents something that might disappoint them. So if it seems that way, like they're not going to tell you that they don't love golf anymore. But if you have that relationship, like they're going to tell you that it's not the same, you know? Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. That's, that's exactly what I was going to say is, you know, have, I think the bigger question is, you know, having that opportunity for them to open up and tell you that themselves. Um, mm -hmm. And then just also to follow back up with um, the original question and piggybacking on Shasta is I think the biggest thing that I wish I would have learned or would have known. Um, and what I would say is, um, is just to love, to be present and to love and enjoy the game for what it is. And I think that goes even to, if you have a player that doesn't want to be competitive, a kid that doesn't want to be competitive, but still wants to go to an NAIA school and just get a little money and play, you know, golf and get an education. That's just as well as having a kid that wants to excel and be number one in the country. Um, right. But I think for both of those things, I, I would have told myself, you know, don't be so anxious about the future and don't live so much in the past of mistakes or whatever 
um, just be present and enjoy it and just smile. So that's what I would say is just let your kids have fun. Yeah. Dope. Mm -hmm. Anita. Anita, you have anything you would tell? Yeah, you're to be honest, it's literally, are... it's literally what Alexa said. But I think from my experience, you know, you get on tour and you know you're trying to work sunrise to sunset you know beating balls out there because you're like the more i work the better it's gonna be or the more my chances and you compare yourself to other people but i think obviously there's persistency you just are um perseverance you just got to make sure that you compare yourself to you and you just got to keep going um but at the same time don't compare like yourself to other people you know um it's just going at your own pace because at the end of the day you're gonna burn out if you keep working 24 7 just and golf is one of those sports that just because you work 12 hours a day or 15 hours a day doesn't mean you're going to, you know, you're going to win a tournament. It's not like that. Um, so I think it's basically going on your own pace and um, obviously doing the hard work, but just know, just, just keep that love for the game. If you got to take a break, you got to take a break, you know, right. just don't, don't work yourself to the ground just because you want to be world number one or something because you're going to burn out before that time. Mm. That's dope, man. Okay. And we had a, a quick question. How do you guys relax between rounds and in tournaments? Uh, I like the other movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> watch the movie. <laughs> yeah. We were um we were at a tournament in French Lake, Indiana this year and they had a, a indoor go karting facility and I really wanted to go. But unfortunately, I didn't have time. But I try to find something like at each spot that seems like it would be a lot of fun. Chef, did you go to the zoo with? Um... Oh no, Lexus, you went to the zoo, right? In Central. He's like, no. Nah. <laughs> I wanted to, but I didn't. Yeah, yeah. I was in the pro am every week. There, I they put me in the pro am. <laughs> okay. That was a while. Uh... I love shutting off my phone. Not talking to a single person. <laughs> <laughs> I think you just gotta do nothing, like non golf stuff, you know, I gotta decompress. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's it. Whatever makes you happy. Mm -hmm. Brianne, uh, yeah, Bri what Brianne said, like finding an activity to do uh, maybe the, the day before the first round. I know we, we were able to get together here and there at events and um, we we actually in uh, Prattville, Alabama got together and drove over to Montgomery and went to the Rosa Parks Museum together. Mm. And um, that was one of the things, you know, where we hope go and have dinner, you know, together once a week or so, if someone's got an Airbnb, we know that they are cooking. That's tonight. right, that's right. And <laughs> it will be over. Don't get it twisted, no, exactly. Yeah, we'll be over like we, I mean, we try to find stuff to do. Um, and they're not going to help you clean up or put the stuff up or <laughs> the groceries. Uh -oh. Somebody's I, uh, don't don't put that on me. Up. I pay Negro. food and I help. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Negro. <laughs> so I think, uh, again, I mean, that's so dope. Yeah. Nah, that's um, sometimes having a drink. Come on now. I Be mean, careful. <laughs> one, one, not like the whole bottle, but I mean, that's right. That's right. one, that's you know, just to kind of wind right. down a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. Once in a while, there's nothing, nothing wrong, wrong with that. that. Not a thing yeah. wrong with nothing it. Wrong no, with nothing, it. nothing, nothing, at, nothing all. at all. Nothing at all. That's dope. I, I, I'm so glad you guys to get to to still have some memories with you four and others when you're on the tour that's so dope I, I think like like you said with the airbnb and you went over to alexis's airbnb and tore it up and ate food and didn't help her clean it up we, we got the memo let's get that up we, we got that <laughs> and it was a great time yeah <laughs> that's awesome yeah, yeah. you guys really great at karaoke yeah. <laughs> oh no alexis you're way better than me Alexis and Anita are really good at karaoke. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh oh, see, sometimes really we, see, we need to see just a, a taste of that on your social media. Just a little bit. Yeah. It ain't got to be the whole I got song. Video of all of them. I'll post okay. it. We don't need the whole song. Yeah, Give, it first. <laughs> Give us a verse. Give us a verse. Give us a verse on social media. <laughs> three degrees. Y'all are three degrees. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get y'all a name. 
All right, we done held them That's up, awesome. Big Sif and Tris. You know, we just so lucky to have you guys and you're actively pursuing yes. your dreams and making us all proud. And you know, we just mm -hmm. don't wanna hold you too much. So uh, let's do some parting words. Let's make this happen. Um, Sif, parting questions, parting words. We're gonna let the ladies end it and get their parting words, but uh, parting questions, parting words. Uh, no questions, man. Um, it was awesome um, to um, have you guys on the golf podcast, the golf locker room, and your family now. So when oh, you, yeah. we have somebody on the golf the golf locker room, your family. So so now since you're family, I'm not gonna code switch. I'm gonna give it to you like this. I'm playing y'all's. Oh. I'm playing. <laughs> hey, y'all's best ball. When we play, take his money, ladies. Take his Day money. Day take his money. Huh? Take his yeah. money. Hundred dollars a hundred dollars. That's all. <laughs> That's Shaz, it. Shaz, you gonna have to sell some of your hair. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna have to bring more money. That's that talent about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, nah, man, it's 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 been dope, man. You guys are unbelievable. Uh, I'm a huge fan. I'm wishing you the absolute best. Uh, you guys will will forever be connected. I mean, we're sitting here in 2021. Uh, down the road, 2025, you guys will still be connected. 2037, I'll be gone, and you guys will still be connected. <laughs> and uh, I, I just, it's it's awesome to see young black females doing their thing. Uh, in this 21st century. Awesome. Kudos to you. That's right. We love it. So, uh, ladies, thank y'all. So, yeah, thank y'all so much for coming on the show. We really, really appreciate it. Shasta, Alexis, Brian, Anita. I've met two of y'all. Look forward to meeting the other two, um, but most uh, in person. And my thing is um, just, you know, be, be just know, like, like at on the IG. We'll push it. We'll put it in the show notes. Let us know how we can help. You know, let us know. Like, folks don't know how to help if they don't know how to help. So if there's a um, foundation or if you have a website or whatever it is so that we can help um, y'all in any kind of way, make sure we have that information so that we can share with everybody. That's right. Thank you, Trish. Again, I'm just going to third that. You guys, thanks for giving us a little bit of your time. We know it's busy still the season yeah. starting um we're just grateful that you came on you gave us some information you know we like to have experts and professionals on the show you guys are professionals mm -hmm. and experts you give our audience something that they can't get anywhere else instead of speculation you're giving us facts and information thank you so much and again let's get on that social media anita shasta Brian, <laughs> alexis let's go let's go i want to see a hundred thousand followers just 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 because you guys have personalities and yeah. i know it's um yeah. it's hard to be like i don't want to show all my personal stuff but you'll get there with the with the divide and the balance of what do you give the public and what do you keep for yourself and it is a balance and especially i think with uh with uh, women because you guys got to be a little more private i believe you should guys be a little more private because there's some weirdos out there it's not sif though but there are some weirdos out there and uh i want you i said it's not sif i said there are weirdos out there not sif. You you send you to take money and for the last thing um and this all for you guys all for you ladies what teas do you tea from? Oh, oh. oh. he's such a hater. <laughs> That's a touchy subject. That's a touchy subject. We got to ask everybody, Chris. You know I don't really get involved in you and Sis thing, but we got professional ladies, so they we got to ask. I'm an amateur. Y'all know I'm an amateur. Y'all know I, I, I play for fun. I play recreational. Trish, let so them ask what you the tease question. should I yeah, please let so us what tease, so what teas should I hit from ladies? I mean, the front the front teas. Oh, 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 oh she is the ball two hundred and sixty yards. That don't mean nothing. I'm an amateur. You tell them I'm an amateur. Where should Playing I hit from the this? Reds and want to yeah. bet for money? I'm just saying. I'm not saying it's wrong, but let's put the whole facts out there. You, you let's just say you driving 240 from the Reds and you playing people for money. I mean, I don't know if that's right or wrong. Those are just the facts. 
Hey, I'll, let's say, I, I'll say this. Let's, I, let's rewind that and say that again. You're hitting 240, playing from the red, and you want to take people's money. Game over. How straight are you hitting it, though? You know, if you're hitting it 240, like, into the woods, like, I mean, well, oh, no, 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 no. We're in the fairway. We're in the fairway. Like, oh, fairway. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, this is, this is, this is it, right? I think you take advantage, right, of what the golf community has allowed. So they say if they're ladies' tees, they're reds. Yeah, yeah, if I'm a lady, I, sometimes I play at random courses and they're like, ma'am, the ladies' tees are up front. I'm like, okay, are we playing a game? And they're like, yeah, sure, but you need to play from up front. Okay, I'll just yeah. drive every green. Yeah. Okay, you're assuming <laughs> I need to play from the red. You take advantage of that I'm not mad until at that. we get still golf moves to a place where we have where they're like, okay, if you shoot a hundred plus, you need to be on reds. If you shoot ninety plus, you need to be here. Until until we all get on the same page, there, you keep hitting from that. The red. That is a fantastic Thank thing. You. Why why is that? That that's some bar. That's some old school. This si. You know, I'm not going to cuss, but that's old relic. Why do the Reds have to be female? It should go by scores. It should go by your handicaps and your distances. Yeah, I don't think it should be female or male tees. That's dope to me, and I don't think no one ever thought of that. That 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 is correct. There's I have an answer for that. What you got, Brianna? I have an answer for that. Um, it's because so many people, I'll just, I'll just say people in general, are playing from <laughs> tees that are way too long for them anyway. So like, we in Cali, men, we in Cali, Brianne. All men tell it. Think that they can hit it so far are actually playing from tees that are way too far for them. So they're like uppity yeah. about women having to play from the front tees because there's no way that a woman can drive it past 240. But yeah, well, I, I agree. I agree with you. I, and the thing is, a lot of times people play from the wrong tees. If you have, if you got four iron going into par four, you on the wrong tee. I mean, I tell guys that all the time, man. I said, if you got four and five hours all day hitting in par fours, you're playing from the wrong tees. You don't, you don't, you don't need to be back here with us. And so, I think that's where the confusion comes in. Is like, as Brianna said, got so you got some people that has that that bravado, and I'm going to play from those back tees. But we're talking about Trish. She's taking people's money, playing from those up tees. She going I'm trying to save a life. Somebody gonna pull a pistol on the parking lot after when it's all over. I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to stop. They are gonna pull. Trisha, keep hustling. I want your money, sis. I'm coming for your money, sis. That's what I'm doing. I'm coming for your money, sis. Don't worry about it. I'll bet on Trisha playing from the four tees. That's right. That's right. That's right. All right. I guess. Thank you, ladies, for answering that question for us. I, 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 I'm going to do a petition. No ladies' tees. It should be about distance, and it should be about you know. I think I'm not talking about Trish. Trish, you can you can hustle all those people in Miami if you want to. We we we, we applaud you, okay? But generally speaking, do you think that's kind of sexist to have now in 2021 to have female tees and white tees and blue? Men got 15 tees. Women's got one tees. I think it should be just tees. Based on your skill level, it's not ladies' tees. They're forward. Yeah, yeah it really is. Ladies, ladies tees anymore. Anymore. No, no, they they just change them to the forward tees. They're not ladies' tees. They're the forward tees. Mm -hmm. They always tell me ladies play from the forward tees, though. So yeah, but that don't make it the ladies' tees. I've never seen a man hitting from the red tees, uh -oh. even though they a lot of uh -oh. them should because they Seniors. don't hit 60 yards into the woods. They should be at the forward tees, but they won't allow the men to play from the forward tees. Who won't allow? The these, are, these are all rules that are up here. Local, Nothing like local small. rules. Yeah, yeah, local rules. That's Seniors true. and juniors play from the forward yeah. tees. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Senior and Trish. And Trish. And Trish. Mm -hmm. And Trish. Look, and Trish. She does that too, unfortunately. All right, ladies. The haters. Thanks so I'm much. I'm not a hater. I just posed Thanks a question. So I don't know anything us. about anything. No, nah, thank y'all so much for joining us. Alexis, when's your next, when's your next competition? I have no idea. Long drive? Okay. I mean, I, I figured you know you're going to get that bag. You got to know when you got to go get that bag, right? Or do you do you still like the long drive, or do you are you just focusing on on tour? Um, I don't know. We'll see. Okay. Yeah. 
Exactly. Don't put nothing out there. The water's your oyster. Open it how you feel when you feel. I like that. All right, ladies. Again, thank you again for coming. Uh, we were just so honored to have you guys here. We kept you for about an hour and a half. Sorry about that, yes. but you guys are so entertaining. What can we do? We have to keep <laughs> Sorry talking. Sorry about that. And on that note, we are out. Deuces. Good night.